Hey guys, important reality video in regards to suspension. So obviously a lot of people watching are driving full drives and or Prados, Hiluxes, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about suspension, but also demonstrating a little bit to do with the comfort of the ride. And we've got a number of videos, basically uh, where we're driving like this. But this one specifically I want to demonstrate, and it's hard to do this, I just want to give you the heads up, demonstrating the comfort of the ride, so to do with any brand of suspension we're going to have some information, and in particular Dobinson's. Now, the most consistent thing, obviously a lot of people, we use, we've been using Dobinson's for years, okay, so a lot of people take our recommendation to use Dobinson's and I've got to tell you it's 99% everyone's happy um, less than 1% someone may have a failure uh, whether it's a leak or whatever the case may be and the service is second to none and I want you to notice how crappy these roads are I've picked this road on purpose because you know they're not bad scenery but it's rough as guts it's got repairs potholes and it's rough now just to give you a, a bit of an idea this camera I've got mounted on a bracket on a suction cap on the windscreen that I got off eBay for about $2.98 delivered. It's rubbish. And I can just, if I'm allowed to for a moment, I'm allowed to touch my radio volume, but I'm not allowed to touch cameras or phones, am I? Anyway, but look, if I had someone, can you re can you reach that phone? Just give it a tap to show them. Look, I'll just give it, so like, you know, it's really quite, you know, it's loose and crap. It wobbles around a lot. So this will show you, hopefully, looking at the bull bar, looking at the antenna, the sort of vibration you get. And then I'm gonna tell you about the comfort level from my experience. And I do drive a lot of different, to compare Prado to Prado to Prado, I drive a lot of them and I drive them on this route. Now this route's about to change. I've got a standard, a fairly standard road test, vehicle check off road test we do, particularly after bigger jobs like injector jobs. And it's not that big, it's uh, about a 20k drive. Um, we're right on the edge of, uh, you know, metro sort of thing. So we get out onto these sort of more country roads pretty easily. And I want to put a few k's on it. Now normally, uh, so the route changes here. Normally we would turn there, but we're not today. So a lot of it, my point is, I drive a lot of Prados on that same route. And they've got lots of different suspensions in them, right? They come in for whatever, you know, mainly injector jobs, and they may have standard suspension, they may have OME, they may have other brands, you know, Coney, whatever, they might have Dobinson's, and then at a later date, they might get Dobinson's and we go on a trip for a drive. They might come back once a year or two, three years, whatever, every, for a major service type thing, right? These roads here are garbage guys, right? Now, the first thing you don't want to get misguided by is how much your bull bar wobbles around. Don't look at the bull bar in your antenna like what you can now and think, oh, you know, this suspension's rubble, look how much it wobbles. Nothing to do with the suspension, okay? The bull bars on these Prados and other vehicles for that matter, but on the Prados particularly, Hiluxes as well, they wobble around a lot. You've got this big chunk of steel that goes full width of the vehicle. It's quite heavy and it's bolted on the front of a chassis that's like two millimeter thick steel that's strong enough but it ain't that strong and there's a lot of twist left to right up and down at each side so just allow for that and of course your antennas wobble around a lot too so while I'm trying to explain to you what's okay and what's not and the biggest variables and what suspension I just want to let you know as I may have mentioned in other videos before this is our 120 Prado 2008 which we've had since 2014, so around about six years now. Halfway through its life, we picked it up with just under 200,000 Ks on it. It's got just under 400,000 Ks now. So the deal is, we know it pretty well. What suspension have we got in there? Well, we've actually got the Prado 150 front coil springs because they're a bit heavier, and we use those on a lot of more. This one's not that heavy. It's got the steel bull bar, no winch, but it's got a sort of pretty heavy-ish bash plate, the K on 4 mil plate. It's got dual batteries, you know, it's got a light bar, so there's not that much weight at the front, but the other thing that adds a bit of weight to the front is uh, the, the heavy duty side steps are quite heavy and, and half of that weight would go to the front. So there's a bit of weight on the front and I had this theory, I actually think that the 150 coil springs, when I drive the 150s, they seem to drive 
better and smoother than the 120s and I thought well what's the difference here there's not a lot of difference you know we're talking same more or less the same struts they are different same same different same and slightly different and I'm like, well let's put the 150 coils in the 120 and see what it rides like and I'm undecided it's been like this for years so I've been undecided for a while I can't be a hundred percent I probably need a few other people to tell me what they think but I think the 120 with the 150 coils rides better now the spring we're using in the front of this is the 350 C59 350 not the 352 that would probably put it up a bit higher than what we'd want but we've got the mono tubes in the front anyway so the height is adjustable the comfort level is awesome I'm really happy with the comfort that being said it's a matter of perspective you have got heavy duty suspension in the vehicle okay the springs are heavier the suspension's newer so if you've got if, if you've had old flog you've got soft springs the standard soft springs that are old and flogged and you maybe added weight to it so maybe overloaded and then you've got worn worn shocks and struts which the the, the job of the shocks and struts the valving is to control the spring because the springs are spring it just bounces right it's to control it, it's to stop that bounce right now basically if you've got some old flog suspension and got this it might seem like a really good ride and then when you get the new suspension you've got heavier springs and decent valving that keeps it all under control and it's all a compromise on both levels both the spring and the shock because the springs hit you know look I like the way Dobbinsons do the springs because in a lot of part numbers they continue the coil at the same rate for longer to get the height rather than go to something heavier one of the main reasons we changed from using some king springs to mainly dobinson's back around oh 2011 or 12 or something around there we went you know what i'm over this hard ride with the kings and they're not bad it's a combination with the valving as well and it all depends again it's all i'm not hanging it on kings i'm just saying it's all a compromise but we noticed a much more comfortable ride and this is not the only time i've then changed people's springs that had king springs over to dobinson's changing nothing else and they're quite happy with the ride so um, definitely some examples there where um, you know that's made a difference now there's no one factor right that says okay so you, it's, it's a hard one but what I want to say is most people and whether it's 90 95 or 99 percent of people that we've supplied Dobinsons and installed or DIY kits everybody seems to be happy and when I question them and try and get them to tell me that it's not that good it's rough or it's soft it's what I'm trying to I'm asking them saying come on you know tell me and they love it so when you get there's been the reason I'm making this video there's been a couple of people I believe I could have it wrong it could be the same person there's been a couple of people lately that have got Dobinsons or we've supplied and or either whatever and there's at least one if not two saying oh the ride's really harsh now it just doesn't make sense okay when you've got a hundred vehicles that just rides beautiful and then you've got you know uh one or two people saying oh it's real it's not even a little bit oh you know yeah it's well, it's really hard it's terrible it's shaking the whole car to pieces just about the windscreen's gone flying out you know like kind of talking really harsh i'm like it just doesn't make sense i do want to get to the bottom of it but i just wanted to explain perhaps some people are expecting too much maybe maybe not i don't know um one of these people and they'll know they'll probably watch the video know i'm talking one of these people even have another brand of suspension which i know it does it is traditionally rides a lot harsher and it is past that limit because it is a compromise so um we certainly need to look at it in case there is a problem so let's do that but understand when you put heavier springs maybe you need to go with someone else you know if you're part of oz prado crew on on facebook or any of the other four-wheel drive groups we got we've got you know we've got one even if you're not in a prado get on a trip there's other people i'm sure you can organize a trip with someone say hey let's get it do you mind if i have a drive of your car for 10 minutes you know what i mean and just see what it's like even out on the tracks now the worst roughest i find the suspension and it's the same on any car, any Prado. Now, just to give you some background, before Prados, we had Hiluxes. Before this Prado, we had other Prados. While we've owned this Prado, we've owned other Prados. Prados come and go. This is the longest vehicle we've ever owned. I've probably owned dozens of cars. I don't know if it's 50 or what. I haven't, I've lost count, right? But this vehicle is the longest I've ever owned in any vehicle. And I've owned some damn good vehicles for different reasons. But I'll go as far as to say, this is the best vehicle I've ever owned, okay? 
mate, if you could get yourself a low K, last of the 120s, end of 09, stock standard, clean, oh, clean slate. I wish you could buy a new 120, I'd buy one, right? As crazy as that sounds. There's things I would change, but there's things that change in newer cars that may have dealt with that, but uh, there's other problems. Anyway, what I'm trying to say in this video is just make sure it's not you. Now, I'm not saying it's you to everyone, but you've got to look at the, 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 what's the word? The odds. You've got to look at the variables. You've got to look at the, the general, if everybody's happy and you've got, you know, there's something going on. It could be something else in the suspension components. Were those control arms changed? Have the bushes changed and they put poly bushes in? People have definitely complained about poly bushes. The, the too high thing where the upper control arm's on an angle. And, and when the when you hit the bump, instead of that arm being on an angle pointing at directly level and easily going up and down, it's raised up and the arm's on a downward angle. So as you hit the bump, it jars through the control arm direct into the side of the vehicle where that arm's mounted. And, and, and that's what it can be. So it all comes down to the height a little bit as well. There's a number of factors. Now, I could easily say, if I looked at my bull bar, I could say, oh, this ride's rough, whatever. It rides great. Now, I'm just gonna get on the cat eyes for a minute because someone mentioned about you can really feel the cat eyes. And it all depends what tires, guys. I can't even feel the cat eyes on the right side there. Couldn't feel a thing, right? Uh, let's go to do this, some cat eyes on the left and some potholy sort of road. Let's get on the line over here and see what we've got. We've got the noisy zzz line, so you can hear I'm on that, all right? It's rough, you can see antenna wobbling. My ride's awesome. I've got the monotubes now, though, and the vehicles we drive and people we've asked with the twin tubes, the same thing, you know? So I don't understand it. Uh, let's have a look at it, but I hope this has been helpful and trying to help you understand those variables and what the odds are the odds are you're going to be happy but maybe if you if you're that type there's different this vehicle it's got not only the the 150 coils in the front it's got the heaviest the 329s in the back the ride's awesome it's got the monotube remote reservoirs in the back i told you that you know they've been in there over a couple of years no problems so far watch the other videos it's not what i'm recommending it's just what we've got in there we're a bit of a trial test fit with the brackets was the first thing some new brackets slow down too fast there's 60 i'm doing like 60 anyway i must have been doing 62. anyway uh this by the way guys this this used to be a hundred zone you know you'd come flying through on your motorbikes whatever no dramas most people probably double the speed limit but um much safer now with a new bridge better than those wire rope barriers you know not that you're going to stack it but you're better off hitting concrete like that than wire rope barriers and i'm pretty sure concrete's probably cheaper to manufacture than all these guardrails all the galvanizing anyway i'm going off topic anyway i hope that helps bada bing bada boom i don't know if it is or not please if you got something out of it and understand a little please give us a thumbs up Try and get out on a trip with someone and check out what their vehicle ride like before you make your choice, perhaps, if you're really fussy like that. But I haven't had anyone firsthand at our workshop that can stand there and tell me they don't like Dobinson. So I'm still quite confident in the product and believe there's going to be some sort of underlying issue with the vehicle. Or maybe someone's expecting something a bit different to what reality is going to be, if you know what I mean. So but let's check it out. Bada bing, we're out of here. Bada boom.